there's just so much more to hear. Download our podcasts at DubaiEye1038.com. WhatsApp has exploded in popularity around the world over the past year, partly due to its encryption features. People think it's safer than sending a normal text message. Security researchers, however, have just found a new malware that can steal WhatsApp messages off your phone. We're joined now by Faisal al the CEO of Dark Matter. Faisal, thanks for coming in and speaking to us this morning. Nice meeting you. Thank you. When I talk about this new malware, this new security threat, the Sky Go Free malware, although it's got nothing to do with Sky as a company, how much of a worry is it? See, I think uh, similar malwares are really all over the place. It's just when they start hitting the news that people uh, start getting shocked that their WhatsApp uh, data are getting stolen. But they're extremely common and they really prey on people not having the right cyber security awareness really at the end of the day to protect themselves. This one's quite scary though. It does a lot of dodgy things that we haven't seen from malware before. One is getting into into WhatsApp and we'll, we'll get into that in a few more minutes. But it also for the first time can record audio off your phone. It can turn your phone into record mode and it can record conversations that you might be having with another person not on your phone but just in the vicinity. It can also take pictures and videos i don't know I, f- I feel i feel like we've we've kind of escalated the uh, the threat here from just stealing your data maybe the good news or the bad news uh, reality actually there are many of these that are around and in, in these regards that do that do similar stuff the issues that it really relies on is and it's not just a whatsapp thing not to target whatsapp it's people not being aware on how they're getting attacked or how they're vulnerable in this regard that's really exposing themselves whether you're clicking on a link because someone said hey there is a new promotion and you like to click on it and the moment you've clicked on it and if your phone is not most up to date and that's got from a security update you're gone your whatsapp your pictures your location uh, i mean just imagine today your phone in reality, before you left home, if you're using a smartphone, most phone already knows that you're coming to office today. Most phones actually know without you saying, where is your home? Because mm-hmm. actually it checks where you sleep at night in that regard. So most of them actually know on the weekend, where do you actually go? And maybe it's not back home, you go to a party in, in, the, in, the, in that regard. So it's really having that awareness of not falling for the link and not falling for the wrong website. <laughs> I know, I've got a bigger question, though, about how secure WhatsApp actually is, because one of the reasons that WhatsApp has become so popular is because people think it's safer than sending a text message because it's encrypted. It's not safer, though, if someone gets hold of your phone. How safe is WhatsApp? In a, in a blanket statement, WhatsApp is fairly secure compared to a general SMS or a general messaging app in, in this regard. But not to forget... Safety is is a relative term, meaning it's safety against who? Uh, are, are you a general individual, which means you are vulnerable to general attacks, or are you a head of state in, in, in that regard? So WhatsApp is secure, but if your phone, you've not protected your phone in the right way, it's like saying, I have my jewel really sitting in my house, but my doors are open and my windows are open and everyone can come in. One of the things you launched last year to try and combat this was the so-called world's most secure phone was it the the catim phone that you launched at mobile world congress in barcelona that was february so 11 months ago i think yes. it's a couple of thousand dollars isn't it so it's it's not a cheap toy how has the uptick been for for that phone as people try and combat these threats so in mobile congress we announced uh, really three things we had our app um, uh, which is the secure app you could say it's a similar chat app as whatsapp but it's really targeting more people looking for extremely high security in this regard but similar to whatsapp if that app is not really sitting on a secure environment it raises the bar but doesn't raise the bar dramatically so we announced Catem phone in barcelona and we were saying that towards end of the year our phone would be ready for our target customers in that regard actually the phone is ready i actually had the phone outside the room uh, <laughs> here in this regard and it's starting to go out to our customers during this quarter how many customers, use. how many people want this? The phone is not targeting uh, consumers, so you can't really buy it in my Axiom stores in, in this regard. 
you it's really bought as a B2B, so either sell it to government or large enterprise in, in that regard. Let's say this, our first batch of production that is happening now are sold. Actually, they're completely sold out, the first batch of production that we are having. So we we're talking about 3,000 phones from that point of view. Let's talk about where you go uh, as a business with dark matter from here. Maybe we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail after the break. But you launched, what, three or four years ago? Three, three years, two months ago. And it's been a fairly <laughs> rapid rise. I know last year you were looking at increasing your headcount by about 35 or, or 50%. Yes. Has the demand for your services surprised you? Surprised? I think we all recognize that cybersecurity... We're all fascinated and we're all excited with the digitization of the space around us in that regard. I mean, we're all, we like to have a digital city and we like to have digital convenience. And the key word here is convenience. We all fall for the convenience and security normally drops. So reality is security is really playing catch up to all of this digitization space. So we've now grown to over 650 staff already now within this year, and we are still looking to expand dramatically within 2018. So in one way, we have been overwhelmed in terms of demand. We're talking security on the Business Breakfast, joined by Faisal al the CEO of Dark Matter. Thank you for staying with us. You're welcome. And Richard was asking you about the secure mobile phone that you've invented, your building that you released last year. You said that the first batch, which is in production at the moment, has been sold out. Who's bought those? So the first batches were bought through entities in the UAE and the UAE government in this regard, plus few other customers in the region that have now an interest for the next batches to come out. Now, these phones are not aimed at Richard Malcolm and myself. They're aimed at people who work for governments, high-level organizations. Large enterprises. People that really care about security and think they're a big target on security in that regard. How much interest from foreign governments can you really expect to receive? I mean, we've seen, uh, certainly on social media, a bit of a backlash against Kaspersky Labs with the sort of the Russia-US intrigue going on at the moment. Will foreign governments really trust a phone that's made, and I'm pulling stereotypes in here, in the Middle East from a company that has the backing of the UAE government... If you were a foreign government, would you say, yes, that's the secure phone that I'll use? Actually, absolutely valid question. And our answer to that is when we announced our solution, it doesn't just apply to the phone, actually to all of our solutions in Barcelona last year, our answer was really two or three things. One is we are having the best talent from around the globe that are building these products, and these are renowned guys in, in that regard. But that's not enough. So people are always suspicious. And in the world we are in, thanks to Snowden and everyone else, every country is snooping on everyone else in that regard. And our answer to this is, and that's actually part of the issue of the cyberspace, there is a lot of this black box and people don't know what's inside. We say to all of our customers, and it resonated well to a number of governments when we were in Europe, any solution you buy from us, including Catem, you could fully review the code, no questions asked, review every line of code you want, You want to change my crypto, you want to change any of the modules to your proprietary stuff you can change. You have full transparency in our solution. And the moment we said that, including the spec we had, it suddenly changed the conversation 180 degrees. And I think it's the transparency that cybersecurity space needs because many people are really wary about, you're supposed to protect me or not, don't know what's really inside these products. Anything you buy from Dark Matter, you could do a full code review on the entire product stack. So we could effectively lock you out of your own product? Absolutely. Let me ask you about the business model for Dark Matter. You said you've got 650 people for a company that only launched three years ago. That's significant growth. Absolutely. That must cost a, a, a fortune. I'm looking at some of the people you've got, and we've spoken to them on the business breakfast. Yes. People like Eddie Schwartz, your executive vice president, he came with a the bluest of blue chip backgrounds in the US. He must have been expensive. Rabbi Debussy, again, who we know on the business breakfast from Cisco, and people like that. So you're not hiring. I'm sure some of your people are junior. But the, the cost base must be significant. Are, are you profitable? Have you got enough revenue to cover those expenses now? See, I think um, when starting this business around three years ago, the aim was we're living in a part of the world that's also investing a 
ton of money on technology, digitization, smart cities, and doing all of, all of the stuff. But actually, if you look at it, most of the cyber players, cyber security players, they're either U.S. headquartered in Europe, maybe there is some stuff in Far East, in the city. nothing is really based here. And our view was, why not launch a global player, not a player that has a UAE ambition, not a player that has a regional ambition, but a player that has a global ambition based here, leverage all the ecosystem that's here, you know, smart cities, deployments, and all of these things, but really bring the best talent globally here and with the network in this regard. So in the early days, definitely this is expensive. But I think after the first year or two, we recognized that many customers appreciate that all of these top talent are based here. And instead of them talking to companies that are parachuting guys between now and then, global talent here, global expertise here. And actually, as an organization, in our third year, we are already now a profitable organization. What is the end game with that, though? I mean, do you want to be eventually a household name in the way that people will talk about Kaspersky or McAfee or anything else? Do you want Dark Matter to be a well-known brand amongst the masses or do you want to keep playing at that high-level organization government space well our customer audience that that we target they, at the end of the day you can't be the supplier to everyone you can't be the product to everyone in, in this regard the customers that we target are customers that security is an extremely high priority to them. So by default, if you're, say, enterprise, banking sector, telco sector, oil and gas sector, and governments, of course, is is a key play, the aim, frankly, is over the next three to five years is to be, when you say cyber security or electronic security globally, which player to go to, we definitely want to be one of the top renowned players globally in the regard. We already have offices here. We have offices in Toronto. We have offices in Finland. We have offices in China in this regard. And the aim is definitely to become a strong regional and global player over the next three to five years. And I think we have a very interesting trajectory from that point of view. But yes, we are not, let's call it, we're not really the, the vendor for SME or consumers in, in that regard. That's not really where we are. I'm really interested, though, in your focus on mobile. I read a, a really interesting quote yesterday, the day before, and I'm paraphrasing, but it basically said that the whole idea of protecting laptops, yes, keep doing it, you know, it's a good thing to do. Obviously, there are threats against the laptop, but where hackers, malicious code writers, rival governments, where everyone is actually concentrating, isn't the laptop anymore, they're after the mobile, it goes with you, you don't think about it enough, it's the weakest link. As is you it said, true? Uh, it's absolutely true. Uh, and the one of the key reasons is the one point you mentioned is if they can get into the phone, it has a treasure trove of information on you in this regard. We were talking in, during the break is that you're, if you're using a smartphone, most likely it already knows, it's actually registered where your home is without you saying where home is, where work is. If you're going to leave during the weekend now, go somewhere. If you're used to going to a friend's house on the weekend, it will actually know that you're supposed to go to the friend's house now in, in that regard. And I think I'd normally like to say that, yeah, everyone needs a very specialized cybersecurity firm like Dark Matter in that regard, whether for phone or anything else. Reality is the most hygiene stuff are not happening. People are using, not a, people have password as password. People uh, 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 clink on any link that they get in, in, in this regard. Um, people don't patch their phones when there's supposed to be an update on the phone and they get a reminder link and they're like, ah, it's okay, we can wait. There is a very clear reason why that reminder is coming for the update. And I think if you do the hygiene stuff, you're fairly okay as long as you're not a head of a business unit or a head of a state because hygiene is not really good enough at that stage in, in that regard. How easy is it to break my six-number password that's on my phone? Um, it depends, frankly, of how complicated you made that password. If the password is, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, then it's fairly easy. Uh, if uh, uh, someone asked me a question a while ago saying, how sec- what do I need to do to be secure? And secure is a relevant term. If if you're a general consumer, as long as you do the hygiene stuff, you know, you don't use password of one, two, three, four, five, and you update your phone from security patches in this regard, and you do the general, not click on every link, don't download rogue apps to your phone, just download it from the normal app store in that regard, you're fairly okay. Now, 
you're a head of a business unit, you're a head of a bank, you probably need to do a number of more measures in that regard. You're head of a state, hygiene won't really cut it, you really need to do much more things from that point of view. So my recommendation is at least keep the hygiene stuff on in that regard. It will keep most of the population safe. Final question from me, Faisal. I may not be able to buy one of your $2,000 phones because they're just for big business and big government. When will I be able to buy shares in dark matter? Mm. Any plans for a <laughs> stock market listing? Well, not yet. I mean, in Axiom Telecom, uh, before we sold our share to anyone else, it took us... Uh, 12 years in, in this regard to sell our first share to someone else. So I think for now, we are frankly f- focusing on really growing our capability, growing our our spread of services, because again, mobile phones is what we're talking about, but it's the big data analytics team, it's the encryption team, it's the SOC team, it's all the other, it's the lab services team. It's this holistic view that we are focusing on growing. And I think that's what customers are looking for. And that's where my attention is at the moment in, in that regard. Thanks very much for joining us this morning. Faisal Albanai, CEO of Dark Matter, we appreciate your time. Thank you. There's just so much more to hear. Download our podcasts at DubaiEye1038.com.